Hi everyone, welcome to the 10 Minutes With segment on the First Principles channel. Today we're going to spend time with Jane Egerton Idehe, the author of the book Be Fearless, Give Yourself Permission to Be You. And we're going to see how she used her values to power through through the different challenges that she's had to deal with in writing the book. All right, let's get Before we continue with today's interview, a special shout out to Skrill Money Transfer. Check out transfers.skrill.com for the best rates and zero fees when you send money from across the world to Nigeria. So some of the personal values that motivated me to write Be Fearless was one, courage having courage, that's the ability to act even in the midst of your fear, hard work and perseverance, putting the extra effort beyond just your skill set, but going the extra and also persevering even with the challenges or the obstacles along the path. To complete Be Fearless, Give Yourself Permission to Be You, that's the book I wrote. I had to go through some personal obstacles Probably I wouldn't call them failures. Uh, one of them was multitasking, having to combine a lot of things that were priority to me, like family time, managing my home, managing my career and writing the book. I would say that was a big, tough, big, big, tough one. Cause uh, at some point, you know, I, I felt like some of the things were slipping. So you had to put a hold on things. I had to personally sacrifice a couple of things. There were fun activities for me. Like I like to cycle, I couldn't cycle. I couldn't go to the gym for about nine months because I needed the time I spent at the gym to, you know, to compensate as the time for writing, be fearless. Uh, I needed to put in extra hours because I was putting a lot of hours in the book. I had to take some time from my sleep time to make sure that I can also do other things which were also, uh, were probably sleeping in the timeline because I also had to put extra time to make sure that, you know, Things like taking care of my kids, managing their schoolwork, giving attention to the home was not also lost in terms of priority. I think one of the things I'll say, you know, where my core values were really important in terms of managing the stress or the challenges that came with writing the book or completing the book was one, uh, in terms of prioritizing, I think, at the bottom of it, you had to ask yourself, what is really important? Which activities, which elements of your life are important? And, you know, God, family, my faith was important. My career was important. So those things became priority and I had to give them time. I could deprioritize a lot of things, but these three things I wouldn't deprioritize. Anything to do with my faith, you know, being a Christian, things to do with my family, um, things to do with my personal work with God and also things to do with my career. So those things will always be on the priority. And even in terms of writing the book, I know that uh, one of the things that also helped me was my core values. You want to be true in your writing and sometimes you are looking at you know, ways to write the book to appeal to an audience or to appeal to a segment of the society. But when you remember who you are and truly what you're trying to do, you just want to be true to your values. And one of them is truth, being truthful. So when I wrote my work, you know, time and time again, I would ask myself, because my daughter, I said, was the muse for the work. So time and time again, when I was stuck, I have a creative block, you know, I was conflicted in terms of what I was writing. What perspective was I telling? I would ask myself, what are you really trying to say? If your daughter was here, what were you trying to tell her? And are you telling her the truth as you see it? So in terms of that, you know, the core values come into play. The core values of what my priorities were, the core values of knowing that I wanted to be truthful in what I do and be fair was important. Yay! Writing, marketing, and publishing the book definitely has drawn out 
hats in my life that I didn't even know that I could pull through. Publishing the book was a tough one because, you know, I had to really pull through. To publish the book required that I had to get, you know, teams together, people to work with. It meant I had to call people, you know, seeking for their support. And, you know, you kind of have to be humble because you're asking people to, like, you know, come together and support you on this project. And these are friends and loved ones and sometimes people that you're acquainted with too. It brings out the, the humility in you. Marketing the book, you know, because, you know, fine-tuning the message, deciding what the message is, creating an impact for the message. Sometimes it's uncomfortable if you don't want to be out in the public and you don't want to be visible. You know, visibility could be quite uncomfortable for a couple of people. And sometimes I felt like, oh, am I too out there? Like I'm always posting. I feel so vulnerable. People know too much about me. You know, like you're talking about yourself. But in all, I try to be true to myself. I try to share things because I've always told myself if I wanted to share, it would be to encourage, not to pull down and not to make anybody, you know, not to disparage people or not to make them feel bad. I wanted to encourage, be a positive influence. So I made sure that my message told that line. Any message I wanted to share out there would be something I felt could encourage and help someone. So I do put, use that to build my marketing materials and to create the visibility I wanted was to associate my book with being positive, with being a, a, a contributing influence to help people grow in terms of their careers or their marriage or to challenge them to the, be the better versions of themselves. So that became the underlying message for my media campaign or my marketing. And I thought that was a really smart one. And sometimes people could be very uncomfortable being on social media. I felt the same way, you know, being on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. And, you know, you just felt you were just way too out there. But I think you could decide, like what I did, I decided what could be out there and what wouldn't be out there. So parts of my life cannot be out there because I could be private with it and that stays with me. And other parts I felt comfortable to share because I thought it was something I could use as a tool to help someone out there. Oh, support system. Initially, um, of course, it was good to have my sports. That was a good way to de-stress. Then it, when I, I needed to give up the sports, I had to give up my girlfriend and going to the gym. Friends were very good. I knew that weekends, I just wanted to de-stress, decompose. You know, I used to go hang out with my friends. Friends were very good. When I also needed help, sometimes I had to put extra hours. And like on a weekend, I would, you know, drive my kids and spend some time with my friends so I could use that time to, if I had meetings over the weekend, I was meeting publishers or, or meeting the marketing team or putting extra hours, uh, my kids could spend time with their friends. So my good friends were very good in supporting me with that. My husband was a key, 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 key pillar in all of this. He was very supportive. He even wrote a chapter in my book. So he could help me, he would review my work, he would give me feedback, I could brainstorm with him. When I needed to brainstorm with someone, sometimes I needed help at the last minute, you know, I had to get something in quickly. So I need to put a couple of hours and he really stood in the gap and helped me there to sit in, to bridge the gap, what is required with the kids or with the family. He would just understand if I couldn't be there sometimes because I was putting extra hours in my work, you know, walking late into the night or you know, waking up quite early and putting so much hours into the work and he was very understanding and that's why I could actually have that time because I had someone that understood that I needed to put those hours so I'm very grateful to them my husband my kids my very good friends go and Linda shout out to you thank you so much you guys were wonderful during that period There would always be the, the stress of managing family and work in terms of meeting a personal objectives. I think one of the things that are really important is your core values because it helps you prioritize. You would never have a perfect scenario. I think don't beat yourself up with that. You will strive to want to always have. But in terms of having the ultimate balance, I think it might be far-fetched. But because you desire it, you would always work towards it. So one of the things I would say is that always be clear what your priorities are. It means that whenever they are sleeping, you accept that my family is priority and is sleeping. So now I'm going to give it time. Um, whenever you feel things are missing, they're not getting the attention because they are priority. 
you would be determined to give them priority. So first, accepting and defining what the priorities are is very, very key. And the second thing I would say, be kind to yourself and understand that sometimes for a short while, things will slip because of a personal objective. It doesn't mean they're not priority or they're not key, but you are aware that because in terms of priority, they are lower down the scale, they have slipped, but you're definitely going to give them attention and bring them back up to speed you know, once the defined time limit is over. And trust your instinct. Sometimes you have to trust your instinct. You have to trust your instincts when it comes to juggling, you know, your personal objective with your family and also with your career. So trusting your instinct means sometimes you have to be open and vulnerable with your loved ones and tell them, this is how I'm feeling today. I'm a bit overwhelmed. I have too much on my plate. And maybe ask for help. How can you help me? How can you contribute? How can you make it easier for me? Even at work, you know, sometimes you've got to be open with your bosses. I think I need some time out. I've been working very late into the night because of a personal objective. I want to take some days off. Um, I remember when I first told my colleagues that I did write a book, they were all so surprised. So it was important when I came back and I said I needed a couple of days off because I was going to promote my book. They were very understanding. And I know I struggled with, you know, really coming clean with, you know, telling them that because I thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't talk about it at work. I wanted to keep it private, but I really needed the time. And I wanted to explain to them why I needed that amount of time off. And they were very understanding because they thought, wow, this is an audacious goal. If you could, if you can meet such a goal like that, we want to help you. We want to support you if you need some time off. So do trust your instinct. Thank you, Jane, for those excellent insights. You've helped us see how using one's core values, one can power through challenges. And you've also shown to us the value of having the right friends, being positive and being truthful. Really grateful for the insights you've shared. As always, if you like the video, we ask you to please smash that like button. Please leave a comment if you would like to be part of this channel. If you want to be interviewed and you feel like you have something to share, be sure to leave a comment below and we'll get in touch. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please, 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 what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Smash the notification icon so that you'll be the first to see videos when they come out. And please follow us on social media, on Twitter and on Instagram. Thank you for watching.